Good evening, and welcome to the 2021 Pride Interfaith Worship Service. I am the Reverend Monica Dobbins, the minister at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City, the proud host of this year's service. And it is my honor to welcome each one of you to this virtual space. We who are gathered here this evening come from many paths, followers of God or goddess, followers of Jesus or the Buddha, followers of our own wild hearts, or not followers at all, but equal partners with life itself. We don't set these uh, paths aside when we come together. Rather, each one of us lays the treasures we've discovered in our faith journeys upon a common altar for the enrichment of all. The theologian Christer Stendhal spoke in his work of holy envy, the characteristic of interfaith work which leads us to long for holy experiences of other traditions, though we cling to our own, to see the beauty and wisdom of paths we will never take ourselves. We are experiencing a true gift tonight, the gift of the presence of the sacred spoken in many languages on the topic of pride. Let us share a moment of thanks for the diversity of creation and the diversity of expression found in these many faces and voices. The theme of this year's Pride Festival is our history, our stories, our community. Every place, no matter how conservative or sparsely populated, has its own queer history, sometimes written along the margins, sometimes whispered, sometimes euphemized and only noticed if we are pay paying close attention. But the stories are there. And this year's Pride Festival seeks to lift up those stories, that history, to remind us in this generation that we are not alone. Our queer and non-binary ancestors travel alongside us in this time, giving us courage and strength, giving us resources for the living of these days. Tonight, we will hear from a woman who is making queer history now here in Utah. We will share together in a ritual that for many years now has helped us to honor those LGBTQ plus ancestors in our community, those folks who have died, who have joined the ancestors. We will pray our stories into reality, harnessing the strength of what is holy to conjure a powerful vision of how we wish to live into our truths and live into our stories. And we will give of our own resources to fund the work that is being done right now so that the stories of our queer, trans, and non-binary Utahns of the future are stories of triumph and pure joy. Most of all, we will experience queerness as a gift, as an expression of the sacred in us and all around us. If there is a God, then truly God is queer, a God who colors outside the lines, who flourishes in difference, who exults in challenging our expectations, who loves loudly and boldly and extravagantly, and whether there is a God or not, the same invitation lies before each of us to become love for every other human that we meet. In Unitarian Universalist congregations, we begin our services by lighting a chalice, a flame that began as a sign in the window for Jews fleeing occupied Europe that behind those panes of glass, they could find a Unitarian who would help them to safety. 
Since then, we have lit this flame for freedom. Freedom in religious expression, freedom in community, freedom in love and life. We light it now for pride. With these words by my friend and colleague, the Reverend Hannah Roberts Villeneuve. People sometimes ask, is pride a protest or a party? And the answer is, of course, yes. And why not? Why not rejoice as we resist, dance as we demand change, celebrate as we create community that delights in all of who we are? So bring all of that with you this evening. Bring your policy demands, bring your glitter, bring your rainbow socks, bring the emptiness you feel for our siblings gone too soon. Bring your Gloria Estefan remix, bring your tender hope for change, bring your most garish eyeshadow, bring your spirit tattered and battered by a world that seems insistent on choosing fear and hate. Gather up all these things and bring them here to a place where we don't have to shoulder these burdens or celebrate these joys alone. Come, let us worship together.
identity of relative and absolute. The mind of the great sage of India was intimately conveyed from west to east among human beings are wise men and fools but in the way there is no northern or southern patriarch the subtle source is clear and bright the tributary streams flow through the darkness to be attached to things is illusion to encounter the absolute is not yet enlightenment each and all the subjective and objective spheres are related and at the same time independent related yet working differently though each keeps its own place one makes the character and appearance different sounds distinguish comfort and discomfort the dark makes all words one the brightness distinguishes good and bad phrases the four elements return to their nature as a child to its mother fire is hot wind moves water is wet earth hard icy ears hear no smell tongue taste the salt and sour each is independent of the other cause and effect must return to the great reality the words high and low are used relatively within light there is darkness but do not try to understand that darkness within darkness there is light but do not look for that light light and darkness are a pair like the foot before and the foot behind and walking each thing has its own intrinsic value and is related to everything else in function and position ordinary life it's the absolute as a box and its lid the absolute works together with the relative like two arrows meeting in midair reading words you should grasp the great reality do not judge by any standards if you do not see the way you do not see it even as you walk on it when you walk the way it is not near it is not far if you are deluded you are mountains and rivers away from it i respectfully say to those who wish to be enlightened do not waste your time by night or day buddha nature pervades the whole universe existing right here now in reciting the identity of relative and absolute we dedicate its merits to all who have worked for equality and freedom and to end suffering for all humans and all beings. May we appreciate their benevolence and show our gratitude by accomplishing the Buddha way together. Dear ones, it is my privilege to introduce to you my new friend and trans trailblazer, Angie Rice. Angie was born in England in 1962 to a U.S. Air Force family and moved to Vermont starting in the first grade when her father retired. Angie says she knew something was different and confusing inside by the age of eight years old and kept that secret buried deep inside until she was 49 years old. Angie graduated from the US Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado in 1984. She became a helicopter pilot 
and served in special operations and combat support in missions which included support of Desert Storm, Somalia operations, and the Bosnia-Herzegovina conflict. Angie retired from the Air Force in 2004, settling here in Utah with her family. She now works as a severe life skills special education teacher. Angie says, from the moment I came out to the world in 2015, I have completely, I, am, I have been completely living my truth with a transformation from living waiting to die to living each day with great hope. But I'll let her tell the story from here. Please join me in welcoming Angie Rice. What a tremendous privilege it is for me to be here tonight to help kick off this year's Pride celebration with the Interfaith Service. I'm Angie Rice. Many of you out there in the virtual world who's watching this may know me or may know who I am. I've thought long and hard about what I wanted to share this evening. Some of that's already been mentioned um, by the great reverend, um, and I'm deeply appreciative of that. Thank you. I could review my life struggles and growing up as that child, troubled and confused about my very identity. I could review my life of service to our country, the 20 years as a rescue helicopter pilot and refueling aircraft command pilot flying special operations and combat support missions in three conflicts. As they were mentioned, Desert Storm, Somalia, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. I could share the struggle and the shame that I lived with trapped inside me for nearly 50 years. Wondering Wondering as a transgender woman trapped inside me if I would ever be able to let the world know who I was and begin living a life worth living. I could share with you the struggle that I had this past February when I called the counselor that I've worked with for years. And I called her that morning and I said, Doc, we've got some work to do because this morning I'm prepared and ready to take my life. I don't share those things with you to be a, to be a downer. We're here to celebrate. And that's my point in sharing that with you. What I'm trying to do is help you to understand me and to understand the uniqueness of me is as unique to me as you are as unique to yourself. And what I've grown to learn and believe deeply in my heart through this entire journey so far is that we all aren't that very different at all. And in many respects, we're sharing a lot of the pieces and parts of each other's journeys. So what I decided was I wanted to bring, I hope true to who I am, a message of, of promise and of hope. A message where we're free to celebrate our truths and recognize the beauty of our diversities, celebrate our communities, and enjoy the truth of who we are. One of the things that I've learned maybe all too well 
is when we're feeling on that journey that we're, that we're journeying alone, we lose hope. And that's nothing that any one of us should ever do. No one walks alone. No one stands alone. When you fall, somebody's there to help pick you up if you extend your hand to receive help. That's what I've done. That's what I encourage everyone to do. So my message is of courage. And I'm no expert. I'm no different than anybody else. And when I define courage, I want you to understand that I define courage as courage means to me. And I learned about courage a long time ago in the Air Force by a friend of mine who was a coyote out in the Utah desert. And that friendship with that coyote over the years helped me not only to survive, but to get to this point in my life and celebrate victory. For those of you who are out in the virtual world listening to this right now, and I know there's a lot of you, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're a parent or you know somebody who's given the teenager the keys to the family car. Okay, I just, I'm just putting it out there, but, but that's, that's poor judgment. Also, in, in my opinion, of course. But poor judgment also was the Air Force commanders at Hill Air Force Base many years ago when they would give young crazy pilots the keys to the helicopter when the only job to do was to go out on the Utah test and training range and out in the desert and run around and burn gas and train and learn how to be the best helicopter pilot they could be. And so, and so let's get to the coyote. That was the day that I remember that changed my life and I'm grateful for it. It also brought me great shame that day. Out on the desert, it's pretty cool out there flying a helicopter, let me tell you. And we would see, you know, wild horses and mustangs and things like that. On this particular day, we spotted a coyote. There's plenty of them out there. And I had the brilliant idea to take the helicopter and start trailing this coyote in the desert. And as soon as the, the coyote realized there was a giant screaming metal machine following behind it, 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 started, it started to run it. I can't say that word in church. It started to run really fast. And so, and so what I did was I, I, I hovered a little bit faster and flew a little bit faster, and I stayed right on its heels. And that continued, and it continued. And then all of a sudden, out in front of me, there just erupted a giant ball of desert dust and dirt and fur and, and paws and tails and teeth and ears and, and brush. You couldn't tell what was happening. It was just bad. For the moment, it seemed kind of cool. And then I realized this isn't turning out the way I expected. And so I backed off the helicopter. And when the dust settled that day, what I saw was courage. What I saw was that coyote haunches down staring right at me. Seemingly against all odds, that coyote reached a point in its life where it knew there was no chance, perhaps, to prevail. But that coyote was standing its ground. And on that day it chose to, to fight for its dignity, no matter what came of it.
I slowly backed the helicopter away. And as I did, and as I did, I saw the fur on that coyote just kind of relax. Its jaw relaxed, its teeth kind of went away. And then the coyote just slowly turned and walked away with its dignity intact. And what that taught me that day, that I've kept with me, and I've just very much recently used it in February, was that no matter what your struggle against, no matter what odds, my transgender brother Sean and I brought a case before the Utah Supreme Court. You know, if it hadn't been for that courage, maybe I would have never made it from February to the 6th of May when we stood on the courthouse steps in a press conference. The Matheson Courthouse announced to the world that that case had been gracefully, favorably resolved in our favor, bringing transgender equality to the state of Utah forever. A voice had been given to those in our state who suffer in silence. A decision that, that maybe has the impact of giving people a chance to live the life that even I feared many times in my life earlier that I would never have that chance either. And so I give a lot of credit to that coyote because that coyote taught me that you may not be fighting for your life sometimes, but you darn sure might be fighting for what's right. I don't like to give advice too much. But here's what I want to leave with you. Find something in your life. Let it be a person. Let it be an activity. Let it be something that represents courage to you. And hold on to it. Hold on to it till the day you need it. And when you wake up every morning, put on some of that courage. Lather it all over yourself. Go out into your life and go out into the world against all odds and live your life unabashedly. Live it without apology and live it without the burden of guilt. This pride, let your light shine. Remember the heritage of the people who've suffered for so long before us and celebrate the victories we've had and know that your dignity is yours to keep. It's yours to celebrate. It's yours to have every day of your life. Live it. Live it every day as though no one is watching. Live it every day as though everybody is watching. I have my own personal faith. Whatever yours might be, whatever higher power may guide you, it's my hope and prayer that 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 higher power continues to watch over all of you and continue to bless you. Enjoy a great season of pride and be proud of yourselves. I bless you all. Thank you.
Even in the joy of pride, we acknowledge the presence of grief and pain as undercurrents in the community. For many years, the rainbow remembrance ritual has been at the heart of the pride interfaith service. Each color of the rainbow represents a reflection on living as queer people and especially on saying goodbye to those in our community who have passed on in the previous year, on honoring the lives of those who are gone. As you watch the ritual as it unfolds, please feel free to interact using the chat function, typing the names of those you wish to hold up to our memories, or perhaps your own prayers for the community as the video prompts you. Please regard this as a sacred moment of memory in which grief is to be held tenderly, even as we do so virtually.
the symbol of the rainbow. Let us talk to each of the pieces of the rainbow and honor its being in our own lives. Honor the first of the rainbow colors, red. We celebrate the wholeness of the root, the blood of life, which is the essence of our being. We celebrate our lives, our physical bodies, in their pure, flowing, fleshly, living, breathing humanity. We remember those whose being has been obliterated, whose lives have been ended prematurely, who have died by suicide, murder, or violence, because their being has not been honored. Let us recognize the beauty of the orange. We celebrate with this the fire of passion, the knowledge of our own sexuality, sexual preference, gender identity. We celebrate our inner knowledge of who we are, who we love, how we fit into the totality of creation. We remember those who have died unloved, or who have never learned to love themselves, or who know not that they are beloved of the Holy One. Let us honor the bright yellow of the rainbow. We with this celebrate the golden light of self-awareness, of personal strength and power. We celebrate our uniqueness and diversity as a community of many separate selves. We remember those who are disempowered, who have not been able to live in the golden light of the sun, who have been ignored, disrespected, relegated to the shadow. At the center of all life is green. We celebrate the green, that verdant, healthy growth in our communities. We celebrate the compassion, selflessness, love, and devotion of those congregations, communities, and individuals who serve the least among us with love and respect and dignity. We hold them in thanks and remembrance for that vibrant and healthy atmosphere of community and life they engender among us. Let us honor the glow of the blue. We celebrate the clear and direct communication of our advocates and allies, those who speak for justice and human dignity and refuse to be silenced. We celebrate and honor those who speak clearly of their truth, regardless of consequence to themselves. We remember those who have been made silent, whose voices are stifled, whose needs and feelings remain unheard. Let us honor the incredible beauty of violet. We celebrate the violet vision of those in positions of power who have vowed to create a new way of living and being for all of us. We celebrate the vision of full civil rights for all in our communities. The vision of newly created legal marriage the vision of possible transgendered rights becoming sacred, the vision of non-discriminatory workplaces, the vision of equality, of housing, health care, and parental rights. We remember those who have been harmed by the blindness of others, those for whom these visions have been denied. 
the crystal which surrounds the flowers or the lights and holds things together, we now honor as holding the rainbow in equity. We celebrate the clear and transcendent spirit which brings us peace, healing, and knowledge of our own innate goodness, holiness, worthiness. We celebrate the many and sacred names of the Holy One, those eternal truths, values, and aspirations which each of us honors within our own hearts and lives. We celebrate the clear truth of our knowledge of the love of God and Goddess, however we choose to interpret them. Amen, Namaste, and blessed be. This year has been pretty tumultuous. As members of the queer community and allies, we usually take this month to parade, dance, celebrate, and remember the journey of being who we are and what it took to get here. We have given bits of our time to uplift and support siblings of color as we too have felt similar feelings of injustice. This year has been one for the history books. We have had to discover what it means to be community, to be connected when we could not physically connect. Our computer screens and phones have become portals of unification. We also know that while some of us have celebrated in our own ways, others have been forced to return to the closets that once kept them safe, as many have returned home to unaccepting families and communities. Grant us strength because we are one with them. Our lives have been a journey of discovery when, as a little boy, we put on lipstick for the first time and smiled in the mirror, or when we were called names on the playground because we weren't like the other kids. Indeed, something gave us strength from within when nervous anxiety turned to one of acceptance as we visited our first club and danced the night away. We had courage as we told our parents or guardians, I'm gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queer, ace, two-spirit, or any other. Our journey of discovery continued as we purchased our first chest binder or met with a doctor about hormone replacement therapy. Indeed, when as allies, we silently listened, loved, and supported in countless ways. Our trust and truth is our own and comes in many forms, even in wigs and heels and glued eyelashes. Let us remember that our community has been with us, even if we haven't felt it. Courage, strength, the divine is often present in the gift of those around us and within ourselves. So as we go about the rest of the year, let us remember the gift we have of being connected to each other. We know things will not be easy. We know this journey might be a steep incline directly up the mountain before us. Boulders might get in our way. We might fall but let us never forget the strength and power in community. Let us remember that we shake our heads when someone paints agendas and calls them truth. Let us remember the gift we are to the world and to each other. Let us follow our arrow wherever it points because you, all of you will be right there with us. The best way to honor our stories and our history 
is to ensure safety, health, and joy for the generations who come after us. That's why each year during this service, we request an offering from all those in attendance who are able to be donated to a local organization that is making a difference to LGBTQIA plus people in our community. This year, the planning team is proud to present this year's offering to transgender education advocates of Utah. And what amazing work they're doing in our state. I'd like to thank their executive director, Candace Metzler, for joining us here in the chapel this evening to tell you a little bit about what TEA does. And then, as we listen to another wonderful musical selection from In Accord, I invite you to visit TEA's website teaofutah.org and donate generously to support their work. Candace. It is an honor to be here with you today to open up the Pride for 2021. I'd have to say it has been an incredible year already, and uh, for many of us, we're just kind of coming out of this fog. And I know as I drove up, I was kind of struggling with getting my head together and what I was going to say, and I, I realized I didn't get all the paint off my hands from, from painting today and doing the other work. And so before I get too far into that, I want to I just recognize this moment and how honored we are that the Interfaith Committee would, would select T of Utah for this offering. Um, when I think about what I want to share about T is it is about community, that the almost 20 years of service that T has provided for this community has been remarkable. When I think of people who come together after work, come together after taking care of children, sometimes showing up with their children to do this work, to come together in community, and create something that I would just describe as an act of love. And that's what drives me in this work is my love for this community. And I know that the people who show up and do this work love this community as well. And so the work that T does is really an act of love, whether it's working with uh, legislators, whether it's working with the Utah Driver's License Division, uh, whether it's just talking to people who need support when they reach out through email or sometimes by phone. Um, it's an honor to have been doing this work for this long, and I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about what we've been able to accomplish. And when I hear incredible messages like the one that Angie brought us today, I, I, I feel hope. And that's what I want other people to feel in the work that they do and in coming to this community is that together we can, we can build bridges, we can do amazing things when we bring that hope to this, to this story. And so we're proud to be part of this community. I'd like to thank Reverend Monica as, as I have been told. And um, I wanna wish everyone a happy pride. Thank you for your support. The work that we do depends on the support of our community and we are honored to be able to do this work. So thank you and happy pride. Tonight we have gathered together in heart and spirit to hold sacred space and celebration for our LGBTQIA plus siblings, friends, family, congregation members, kith and kin, and selves. No matter where life's journey has taken us, whether we have gone through periods of pain, renewal, ignorance, growth, hope, our paths meet to share common ground and celebration. Whether we are out and proud, somewhat or fully closeted, questioning everything we thought we knew about ourselves, or dedicated ally, we are united by our common humanity. Honoring our different traditions of religion, faith, and spirituality, we come together for a dedicated purpose. Whether we petition the direct action of a heavenly creator, whether we look to a prophet's teaching for direction and wisdom. Whether we seek divine inspiration and encouragement. Whether we open our hearts and minds to the connecting spirit that lives within us. Whether we summon the magic of the universe to take action. 
whether we implore each of us to acknowledge our interconnection and work together to shape and invest in a better society. We join together now, united in common purpose, to affirm, celebrate, and strengthen our LGBTQIA communities. Let these prayers, invocations, blessings, proclamations, whatever we may call them, be amplified beyond just this evening and just these many places through our continued thoughts, words, and actions. If there is a God, surely that God fully loves all of us without strings or requirements. If there is a grand creator, surely that creator designed us in their grand image and declared us good. If there is divinity, surely the divine is reflected by each of us. If there is goodness, surely that goodness is rooted within each of us. If there is only humanity and community, surely every individual is equally valuable to a perfect community. None of us are meant to live alone and isolated. We proclaim that we are all connected with each other. We as individuals may heal on our own, but we as part of a larger societal community must heal and grow together. When one of us is hurt, our community relationship is damaged, and we all suffer. When we have perpetuated, benefited from, or simply ignored the hurt of others, we share the responsibility to repair the harm, not just through words, but also through our own changed actions. Especially where faith organizations, legal systems, and wider society have failed to fully love and embrace, include, and protect, we must take action to love more boldly, to love unabashedly, to love loudly, to love proudly. With each of us strengthened by our individual beliefs, traditions, and practices, let us proclaim our commitment to take bolder steps together, to dismantle harmful systems and shape a better society. We have not always acknowledged the vast diversity of our existence. We have imposed our own limited knowledge and limited thinking on things we did not understand. Let us respect and honor the inherent value and humanity in all of us. We have not always believed the testimonies and experiences of others, choosing to impose our own personal experience upon them instead of allowing their testimonies to open our eyes. Let us open our hearts and minds to hearing the truth of others' testimonies. We have questioned the benefit of differing perspectives, reinforcing the status quo without consideration. Let us question assumptions, examine traditions, and seek out diverse viewpoints in order to build a better way forward. We have watched as others have hurt standing idly by or even turning away instead of promoting compassion and understanding. Let us seek comfort and justice for those who have suffered or been neglected. We have made decisions for others without them, denying their agency and will. Let us design new processes around decisions and change to sincerely involve all people who will be affected or who may have unique input. We have dismissed, criticized, judged, and made jokes about people who seem different than us or who do not fit in with the dominant image of so-called acceptability instead of recognizing their infinite worth and the beauty of our diversity. Let us show honor to those who question, seek, and live their truth. Let our hearts and minds be continually opened wider and our actions demonstrate love continually more boldly. We will give thanks for all of the diversity around and among us. We will celebrate the existence of every LGBTQIA person and community. We will welcome the opportunity to center and amplify LGBTQ voices. We will publicly recognize the value and sanctitude of LGBTQ lives. We will practice true allyship 
with concrete actions of accompaniment and support. We will take a stand against systems, institutions, and actors of hate. We will actively seek options that better practice LGBTQ inclusion, compassion, and liberation. We affirm that every LGBTQ body is inviolable, never to be controlled or dishonored, and subject to one's own will alone. We vow to act with compassion and empathy for all LGBTQ individuals and issues. We pledge to provide a soft landing place and selfless listening for LGBTQ healing. We promise we will proactively make more room for LGBTQ people in conversations, activities, ministries, and leadership. We commit to accompanying and supporting the ongoing pursuit of LGBTQ justice. We will work together to move beyond mere acknowledgement and acceptance. We will work to build a world with full affirmation and pride in our LGBTQ communities. We loudly, unabashedly, and boldly declare that we are beloved. That we are beloved. That we are beloved. You are accepted. You are heard. We are loved. You are worthy of infinite success. You deserve respect. We matter. We are powerful. We are brave. We are beautiful. We are beautiful. We are beautiful. We are valuable. We are easy to love. We are full of spirit. We are sacred. We are sacred. You are sacred. We are sacred. We are sacred. We are good. We are human. You are invited. We have a place here. We belong. You belong. We belong. You belong. We are enough. We are priceless. We are worthy. You are not alone. You are not alone. We are not alone. We are you. We are you. And you, you are you. 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 You are you.
friends, thank you once again for joining us this evening for this interfaith celebration of pride. Every faith community that was lifted up this evening is an LGBTQ plus affirming and welcoming community. I send blessings to each one of these faith communities for sticking together during this trying year and blessings on you as you begin to gather together in person again. I want to especially thank the social justice team here at First Unitarian and all those faith leaders who were a part of planning for this service. The gifts of your time and treasure are deeply, deeply appreciated. Finally, if you haven't already, as soon as the service is over, please go to TEA of Utah org make your donation and please be as generous as you can thinking of how you were moved by this service and especially moved by our speakers who spoke to their experiences please donate very generously after the service we extinguish the chalice flame tonight with these words may this year's pride festival be a source of inspiration and celebration for the year ahead may it be safe May it be nurturing. May it be joyous and uplifting. May each one of you be strengthened in your own faith journey for having been with us here tonight and experiencing the expressions of faith in this interfaith service. And may you go forward as proud as ever, more in touch with your own queer story and with yourself. Blessings on you all. <laughs>